All right. Praise God. I woke up breathing. Always really super good. Another day to praise the Lord. And I woke up this morning with a, a very, very expectant heart. Um, get emotional. Let's think about it. Woke up and the Lord was like, good morning. How are you? And I'm like, thank you, God, for another day of life. And he said, are you ready to preach the gospel? And I was like, Phew. And it gave me so much fire in my chest. Let me grab one of these already. It gave me so much fire and expectancy in my chest because it was like he was releasing me to do what I've been made to do, which is, which is talk about him, which is preach the gospel, which is which is love him publicly and draw people to love him on a deeper level and just to realize who he made you to be and who you are and why he did it. It's just, there's no better job when he was just like, are you ready to preach the gospel? You know I am. Yeah. Might be the evangelist in me that's just like, this is what we're talking about. All right, I'm going to pray. Jesus, we worship you. We thank you and we love you. We bless your holy name. There's nobody like you. We magnify your holy name, Jesus. We worship you and we love you and we thank you for blessing this meeting. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. I just ask that you speak to our hearts, God, that, that you use me to deliver your message, God. I just thank you um, for, for using me and and just how you are and how you speak to me and how you speak to us, God. I just ask for no distractions to come to our minds right now, God, that we can receive your word and tuck it away in our heart, God. We just worship you and we love you and we bless your name. Okay. I just wanted to, first thing on my notes is pitch the color class. That color class that's on September 11th, I am... For one, super duper excited about it. I think I've talked about it before, but uh, we were in a, a meeting with the elders and stuff, and somebody said something about colors, and it completely blew my mind when they told me about a red personality and all this kind of stuff. So I, for one, am going to be super excited to take the class. Okay, as always, I am going to start with just the, the worship, just the beautiful, beautiful worship. Um, in one of the songs it says, um, when I see ashes, you see beauty. And I'm thinking in my head, how many, how many times in my life have I looked at situations in my life and, and just seen ashes? <clears throat> I've just seen ashes and to God, they're not ashes, right? Cause he sees the beauty of my ashy life, right? So why am I looking at these things that we call ashes, some problems in your life, some discrepancies, some, some needs that aren't getting fulfilled, some hurt that's been done to you? When I look at these stuff, I got to know that God has taken care of it, you know, because these aren't ashes anymore, because when he sees them, he sees beauty, and he brings beauty from ashes, and we're all ashes, right? We're just burnt up, left over from the world, and that's the way we feel sometimes, but that is not for a second how he ever, ever looks at you or thinks about you. You're no longer ashes. He picks you up and he molds you and he put you back together and he says, you're my beautiful bride. It's just, it's it, it's everything. And then I love the, um, we said it again and again and again during worship, almighty fortress, you go before us. And it got me to thinking, if he's the almighty fortress, that's where I'm hiding in. That's where I'm resting in. And, and what is he doing? He's leaving us in that fortress, but he's going before us. And it, it, is, it gives you so much security knowing that we are found in him, and he's our fortress, and there's nothing, there's nothing stronger than that. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And it's like, if that doesn't give you some relief in your life, go back and sing it again, because almighty fortress, I just declare that you are my fortress, God, and you go before me. And if you're struggling in life, just repeat that. God, I'm struggling right now. I don't feel like this and this and that. God, you are my fortress, and you 
go before me. You fight every battle, right? So if you don't feel that way, go back into it. He is. He is that. And if you don't feel that way, there's something in your heart that's lying to you and saying that he isn't. And you need to find that. You need to uproot it, and you need to tell it to leave now in the name of Jesus. Because he is your almighty fortress, man. He, he's your protector. He's your everything. And if you're not housed in him, if you're not found in him, you're going to struggle. Because you can't fight your own battles. You're very, very ill-equipped to fight any battle that is coming your way. That's why he fights it for you. Your only battle is getting on your knees and putting your hands up and receiving his mercy and his grace. Then I had to, one more. Um, that as soon as I heard sinking deep, it was like, it was like, oh, immediately was just filled with emotion because it's such, it's such a good song because that's where we need to be when we go into our closet with him. It's not a surface level thing with God because he's tired of surface level with some of us Christians nowadays. He wants to sink deep. He wants to go there every morning. He doesn't just want business as usual. He wants it's it's a meeting with a friend. Every time you meet with your friend, you want to talk about the same old stuff, and you don't get bored. You get excited to meet this person, and that's the way he is with you. He's so excited to sink deeper into your life and to go deeper and to, and to be more intimate and to be more revealing because that's the way he wants to be with you when, when he's alone with you is he wants to know everything. He already knows everything, but he wants you to confide in him and bring your deepest struggle, your deepest thoughts, your your deepest how come or what ifs, like he wants it all. And, he, and if you don't have that with him, set up that time to just start talking with him like that. And then if you, if you don't think he talks back, go ahead and keep doing it. You'll know that he talks back because the more you get to know him, the more you recognize it's his voice that you're hearing there. And then you can start to figure out what you do with that voice. Okay, so the song says... Your, your love so deep, it washes over me. So I'm thinking about like, um, you know, like if you're swimming, right? It's if, if the water's so deep, there's more of it to just overcome you. Um, you can't just be sitting up high on that boat way above that water. You have to get in and get wet. That way the love is so deep that it's, it's, it's just absolutely just washing over you. And that's the way his love is. He doesn't just love you a little bit. When he loves you, he loves you hard. And it, it washes over you. And it washes over you. And there's not one spot on you that is not unaffected by him because his love is just washing over you. Okay, and I love this part. You're, okay, so your love is so deep, it's washing over me. And it says, your face is all I seek. You are my everything. And then it says, Jesus Christ, you are my one desire. Lord, hear my only cry to know you all of my life. Golly, that's just it. That's everything, guys. If you're struggling in your life, just pray this. God, I know your love is so deep that it's washing over me. Your face is all that I seek. You are my everything. You know what you're doing there. You're looking his direction. And like I said before, when you glance in his direction, you ravish his heart. So when you're saying directly to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, your face is all I want to seek. Help me. It's like a cry for help if you ask me. Your face is all I want to seek. Why do I, why do I seek out this and seek out that? Your face is all I want to seek. Help me. You are my everything. Let him know. Let it, like, just let him know. You say it. You are my everything. Because once you start to say it, your words are powerful, and you can start to change stuff in your life. The stuff that's taking a hold in place of the spot that God is supposed to be. God, you are my everything. Is he your everything? Because I know life is so distracting that sometimes he doesn't feel like my everything. And then when he doesn't feel like you're everything, tell him, God, right now you don't feel like my everything. Why is that? Well, because you've placed stuff in front of me. Okay, what if I placed in front of you, God? You know? You have those checks in your heart when you don't feel it. It's so healthy for you to just be honest with yourself day to day and be like, where am I at with you? <laughs> and then I love this, Lord, hear my only cry. You know you all of my life. 
And that no is an intimate word. Just, I just don't want to know about you. I want to know you personally. And then I love how it just brought up to me um, when I heard, hear my only cry to know you all of my life. And then I started to think, you know, um, our, our job is to love God, love people. But how can we love them if we don't know them, right? So number one becomes so easy. The more you say in your heart, I don't know you, but I want to. I want to get to know you. I want you to be my everything. Because right now in my life, I do these things and this and that, and it just doesn't feel like you're my everything. God, this week, help me feel that you're my everything. So good, man. Worship worship is, is fire. It's, it's just when you, it's just cultivating that atmosphere. But when, like I said it a million times before, and it's like how I always start, <clears throat> but I need, God needs people to realize or whatever, it's just, it's more than words that you're saying when you come here on Sunday. You know, it's just like I've heard this song before and I'm going to sing it and I already know these words, but no, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I mean, come on, put something onto it, guys. It's, it's like I'm begging you every time when you worship, worship him greatly. He's a great God who deserves to be worshipped greatly. Every single time you're here to worship him, worship him. Because worship has gotten to be such a mundane thing in churches where we just, or, you know, we, we just do it. We just worship and then we do this and we do that. But no, we get to worship the one true king corporately as a bride. Like, come on, we get to do that. We have that access. He's so nice to give that to us. And it's so sweet that we get to, isn't that so funny? He he made worshiping him fun. Like, it's just, it's so cool. I could just, I'm, I'm good. I'm going on, guys. <laughs> okay, I, like I said, am going to preach the gospel today. Um, we're going to be in Hebrews, and I love Hebrews. It's, it's just, just a main vein for me. Um, they say Paul wrote it. Um, that's up for debate, I guess. They can't really nail it down. Some people might know more than me on that. I just did a little bit of research on it. Um, and what was really cool, I found interesting, um, is in this sermon um, on Hebrews, um, he's preaching to a lot of people that a majority of them were um, people in Judaism and Jews that converted to Christianity. And... Um, it's, it kind of makes me laugh because they, they, con they converted. Okay, this is, this is it. This is where we're going. And then they expected Jesus to return soon. And when soon didn't happen in their, their mental capacity and time frame, um, some of them got, you know, and then persecution started happening. And then they're just like, hey, is this all it's cracked up to be? Like, what's going on here? And, um, and that's where I like where, where Hebrews 2 comes in because it's a little context on how they were delivering the message, and then how um, it relates to us today, you know, um, because there's people that have converted to Christianity or given their life to Jesus, as I like to say, um, and then sometimes they just, they just don't feel so sure, you know, and um, I can tell you it's the best decision you ever made in your whole entire life, and if you, if, if that's you and you're not feeling sure, then boy, oh boy, let's go for it. <laughs> All right, so in chapter 2, um, the, the heading says, A warning against drifting away. I don't know why my phone keeps shutting off. It's really annoying. Normally it just stays on forever. All right, number 2. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. For the message God delivered through, the, through angels has always stood firm, and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So what makes us think that we can escape it if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak? And God confirmed this message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. So let's, let's start with uh, number one. Um, it says... I love how it starts with a warning, too. It's just 
So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard or we may drift away. Um, so in drifting away, if you guys have ever been like uh, kayaking or in the ocean or in a boat or whatever, um, drifting do like doesn't happen suddenly, right? Um, you can, and especially when you're, when you're looking at the water and everything kind of, kind of seems the same around. Um, and next thing you know, you're next to this buoy and you look up and you're about from here to the chair away from the buoy. And then pretty soon you're drifting away. Um, so I love how he says, um, be careful that you don't drift away, you know, because you can do that without knowing that you have drift away how many of us have realized that we've drifted away so far from that spot to where we have first said, I love you, and that you're real, and that you're my everything, right? How often have we taken back and looked at our life and said, wow, I'm not where I was when I first said yes. I'm not where I was a week ago when I said yes again. You know, like how, how easy is it for us to drift away into old habits and into old motions and into old ideals and old thinking even if we came from a religious mindset and we've been we've been broken free of it we can still try to find ourselves drifting back into stuff that we shouldn't be drifting into so that's why it, can t it takes a, that's why i come to god every day am i drifting let me know i don't want to be drifting i want to be anchored solid and secure in you and drifting can happen when we don't even know it, right? We've, we've just been drifting so long to the point of how did I get to this place? Um, and it reminds me, um, just this week, I um, had a childhood friend, and I haven't heard from him in a long time, and I decided to hit him up, and it's totally a Holy Spirit thing. He was like, hey, message this guy. And um, I looked at my messages, and... I had sent him some and he just left me on red or whatever. So in my mind, I'm like, I already tried to reach out to him again. And I guess his life gets busy and nobody wants to connect. And um, I just simply said, hey, bro, I miss you. How are you? I'm thinking about you. And uh, totally a God thing, too. Because he was like, well, I feel, I feel like today is the day I'm going to kill myself. Um, and he said, I... And he just said, I just don't like my life right now. I don't like the person I've become. I don't like the things that I'm doing. I don't like the job that I work with. I don't like the friends that I hang out with. He says, I'm just ready. Life sucks, and I'm just done, and I want to end it, like, today. And I was just thinking in my head, praise God that I get to reach out to him, that I listened, you know. I mean, he's going to send somebody, but um, I was obedient. He got to use me. And... Um, and me and my friend, we have we had a really, really great relationship, and we've always been really good friends. And he didn't know how he got to that point, right? He wasn't like a, like a believing Christian or anything, and um, he's been living for the world for a very long time. But now when he had time to pick his head up, he saw that he was involved in some really real stuff that was taking his life. It was taking his joy, his peace, because he doesn't have any of that joy. He doesn't have that peace right comes from the lord that true rest that true um not worrying about like tomorrow and having that anxiety like people who don't have christ don't know what the true peace is in their life and i know they go to bed and toss and turn inside their head because you can't shut that off because the accuser is always there saying you suck look what you did look at your life look how you're living you're, you're a shell of what you used to be and that's what the devil was trying to do was was beat up my friend because he drifted away he, he, you know what I mean? Like he, he's drifting away from like further from that point to where God can encounter his heart and he can be set up and pliable and moldable to receive um, what God is telling him. Um, so praise God, I got to, to minister him and talk to him and um, just be there and say, I'm never going to leave you, dude. Like if there's not one person you have, you have my family. Um, so it's cool. We're going to, I'm going to try to, set him up with a rehab, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move him here to the state, and we're going we're gonna to get to hear this testimony of how God has, has changed this guy's life. And, and it's cool because it all started with that obedience of, it sounds like that, right? Hey, message your buddy. Simple. Boom, 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 boom. And I tried to talk myself out of it, right? Well, he didn't reply to my last two messages. So what? Is he telling you to do something or not? Is he telling you to love somebody or not? 
I have my own ideas, but his are way better than mine because he knows the outcome and he knows the potential of that guy's heart and my potential to love that guy into the kingdom, right? All I have to do is be ready. And we didn't talk about Jesus one time when I was talking to him through these messages, but I still got a chance to love him because I know that he knows that I'm a pastor and um, and if I bring up Jesus, he's going to, whoa, 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 and it's fine. I get him in my presence, and Jesus comes out of me. You know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm loving this guy, and it is just so cool just to listen to the Holy Spirit and, and say what, what he wants you to say. It just feels so successful, and you just get a chance to love somebody, right? So if you guys have heard that in your heart this week, reach out to that person, you know? have some coffee with them. I say it all the time. There's so much power in, hey, how are you doing? And there's a lot of people that I reach out to, hey, how are you doing? And they leave me just ghosted. <laughs> but they don't leave me wholly ghosted. <laughs> that one just came up. It, it might be good later. <laughs> so as long as the Holy Spirit, if you're listening to the Holy Spirit, you're good, you know? All, the best you can do is try. And then um, we don't even have to tr really try, right? He's your fortress. He goes before you. So uh, he already prepared my friend's heart for, okay, like, why did he respond that time? Because God went and prepared his heart for it. Because God knew he was drifting away. But he's tethered, right? He's like, there's a line there, and I get a chance to be like, and you pull it once, right? You're going to start drifting back in that direction. So his first pull was just a subtle, get him coming, you know? All right, pull him harder. Hey, let me, let me tell you what God's been sharing with me about you. You know, there's opportunities for that. You don't have to just blame and go for it and share, share it all like that. There is times for that, but listen to the Holy Spirit. It's so much fun that you get to get to partner with him and do these things. And that was rabbit hole number one. <laughs> okay, and also, um, if you're drifting away, there's been a tendency, I know in my life, um, that when you've drifted, uh, you feel like you've just drifted too far and you just feel like or even if you didn't feel like you dr drifted too far um, There's there's a, a certain amount of guilt and shame um, that the devil wants to try to Attach to you when you realize that you're drifting. How could I be drifting? Mm, what no, I read my Bible every day. Sorry son. You could be drifting, you know, is your heart in it? Um, but there's a little bit of guilt and shame that gets attached to it. And then also there's a bigger word there, which I, I struggle with, is hypocrisy, right? Like, you hypocrite. How are you drifting away? Like, how are you doing this and that? Like, no, that's not what God's saying to you during this moment. That's the devil trying to get you to not replug back in, not reopen that phone line, not reopen that connection. He will try everything he can to make you feel any way that he can to make sure that you don't replug back in when you've drifted away. He will do everything. He'll make you feel disgusted, hypocritical, stupid, embarrassed. Like whatever, whatever those dumb things are, he will try to make you feel them. And if you start feeling them, he's squeezing you, right? So when you squeeze an apple, you get apple juice. When you squeeze an orange juice, you, or an orange, you get orange juice. And then when you squeeze a Christian, you should get Jesus, right? So, so if, if the devil's squeezing you, you, you feel it. You recognize that. Oh, that's guilt. Oh, that's shame. I see you. No, thank you. God, I am feeling this way right now, and I know you don't want me to feel this way, and I know that comes from the devil. Change my heart. Help me. I'm not a guilty person. I'm not a shameful person. I'm not a hypocrite, God. Help me. Change my heart. And if I've been being these things, show me. That's easy, right, guys? Don't let him beat you up like that because there's an advocate who's pleading your case right now that's, and the devil's saying, look what he did, look what he did. And then Jesus is saying, I've paid for it. I've paid for that as well. God, God says forgiven, right? Because that's who you are. You're loved and you have him there pleading your case. So if you ever feel that guilt, shame, like you've drifted, oh yeah, that sounds like me. I think I have drifted away somewhere in my life. Don't let him for a second tell you, let the devil tell you that you haven't. Oh, you're good. You're still doing good. It's not that bad. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And he's going to say, run to me. Run. Run. Into the throne room on your face. It's okay. I'm waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. I just have to hammer that home because so many drifting away is so easy to do if you're not looking at a space. Truly really just looking at a space.
God, where am I? My anchor. Am I tethered in you? So good. So I like, um, and number two, for the message God delivered through the angels has always stood firm and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. And I like that. That's like the, um, it gives a good rendition of like the, um, the 12 commandments, right? And then, and then Jesus came and fulfilled the law. So we were under a law um, where like justice reigned supreme and now we're under the gospel which is delivered by grace. And it's so good, right? That um, I just like the, 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 just the, the two things of, well, do you want this or do you want this? It's like so super easy. It's like, do you want a dollar or do you want a million dollars? Like, okay, one million. And some people are like, more money, more problems. Give me that dollar, I'm good. But it's cool because um, everything was just, it seemed just like so unforgivable, unforgivable and unobtainable. Um, just the, the, the absolute like iron hammered fist about it. And then Jesus comes and gives you grace and mercy. And he says, hey, I fulfilled that. It's good. Just love me. I've paid that price. And I like it. So, so what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by Lord Jesus himself? So... If you don't want to accept Jesus, right, then go ahead and try to fulfill all that. Because you can't have one without the other, right? Jesus said, hey, I paid that price for you. Now accept. And you don't? Well, then go ahead and try to live that way. See how far it gets you. See how much the struggle is. See how hard life gets for you. Because you're fighting your own battles then. You're, you're okay, right? You're good. You're capable. Not for the king of kings, the lord of lords, and the lover of your soul. You're just going to turn your back to him. Justice or mercy. And I love uh, God confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. I love <clears throat> when, you, when, you, when you preach the gospel and you say that God is this, he shows up. And he confirms it by these things. And, um, yeah, and I have in my notes, uh, for, he didn't just send the message, he testified it with signs. And in the NIV, <clears throat> the NIV version says, distributed according to his will. And then in, in NLT, um, whenever he chose. Um, so I like how miracles according to his will, not man's will, right? It's to glorify and testify of his goodness. When he does something miraculous, when he heals somebody, he delivers somebody, he, he gives a prophetic word. It's for, to testify of his goodness. God, you're good, you know? And um, I remember I was, we were talk, I was just talking with a buddy yesterday, and uh, we were talking about old times and testimonies and stuff, and he, there's a guy, David, and um, he, was just, he was just really bent in a bad way, and he was just really getting attacked mentally. And <clears throat> my buddy said, hey, how come, how come, you, don't, how come you think that uh, uh, David didn't get delivered? And... I, we were thinking, I was just like reading in Hebrews and in Hebrews, and it says that he, he distributes it according to his will. I can't tell you why he did or didn't, um, but the people that we were shacked up at the time, if it would have happened, maybe they would have uh, took the glory and pointed to themselves, and that's not what God wants at all. So I can't really sit up here and say why some people get healed or some people don't or, you know, a prophetic word comes or it doesn't. All I know is that, that he distributes it as he chooses. I'm fine with that. <laughs> and it testifies of his goodness. So if I can do anything to testify of his goodness, I'm there. Okay. Now we're going into five. And furthermore, it is not angels who will control the future world we are talking about. For in one place, the scripture says, what, and um, I believe this is in like Psalms 8, um, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, or a son of man that you should care for him? Yet you made them only a little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honor, you gave them authority over all things. And I like, um, 
I like that in Psalms eight because this was this was this was David um, basically just just ooing ooing and awing over the Lord, you know, and he's like, who are, who are we? Like who we are just just bags of flesh that you would choose us just a little lower. I mean, come on, what are mere mortals that you should think of them, or the Son of Man that you should care for him? So he's like, who are we? And like he's he's just giving him such reverence and and giving him so much credit for who he is. And that's the way like we feel sometimes, and it's like it's not like an unworthiness, but it's like a oh, I, it gets to be me. I get to be loved by you. And you made them only a little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honor. Do you guys know that you're crowned with glory and honor? Yes, I do. <laughs> I am crowned with glory and honor. And it gives you authority over all things. Now, when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. And here it goes. I love this part. But we do, but, okay, so what we do see is Jesus, who, who was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us. So I love this. Um, in Psalms 8, it says, um, what, or back up in five, what are mere mortals that you should think about them or a son of man that you should care for him? Um, I love how the son of man was put in there because the Old Testament was talking about who? Jesus. And the Old Testament points to Jesus. And it's just like, and then, and then he gets to say it in nine, what we do see is Jesus. So if you were confused about who the son of man was, he says Jesus, and he also repeats, who was given a position a little lower than the angels. And that's exactly what they said in Psalms 8. So I love how, how they, were, they were tying back the Old Testament into here and pointing back to Jesus. And then he's pointing at Jesus, right? And because he suffered death, now he's pointing at the cross. It's just like he's showing you who the Son of Man is and what he did. He suffered death for us. Did you guys know that? Jesus suffered death for you. For you, for you, for you. He suffered it. He is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. And I always say, uh, I heard Daniel Kalinda say a while ago, and it just rings true, that um, uh, he got what we deserved so that we could get what he deserved. So he tasted that death first for us. And he said, don't be afraid. I'll go before you. I will do this for you. I will die for you so that you can be with me. There's no greater love, guys. God for whom through everything was made chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus. Through his suffering, a perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation. Golly. I just can't even like <clears throat> think right now because and it was only right. It was only right that Jesus it's so cool because it is only right that Jesus. Why? Through his suffering, suffering he became a perfect leader and he was fit to bring. So he's just letting you know that Jesus was a perfect leader. He was completely sound and fit to do what he did and lead you to where you're going. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. And that is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Golly. Did you guys know that Jesus is not ashamed to call you his brothers and sisters? You should feel so much relief in that. That the one who died for you uh, goes up there and says, God, this is, my, this is my brother Jesse. This is my brother Steve. This is my brother Bill. He calls you that because he loves you. And he died for you. And, he want, and he's sitting up there and saying, saying, this one gets in. I paid for this one too. On the list, here we go. Jesse Cotts, you know I died for that one, God. Let him in. 
he's saying that about me. He did that, you know what I mean? Just grab a hold of that. He's saying that about you. And it just makes me so happy that I think that he did that for me. And how many times have we known that Jesus died for us? And then how many times when we know that, do we just get emotional about it? Because it's true, he did. He gave his life for me. I have to give everything to him because I owe it. I can't, I can't, I can't live a really solid, good life unless he did this for me. And he's, he's allevi- alleviated so much strain and pressure and, and striving because he did what he did for my life. I get to be a father of six girls and, and they're provided for and, they're, and they love me and they care for me and he, he gives me everything that I need. He does that. And the least I can do is look at him and love him back. The least I can do is say I love you too. Lord, you are my everything. I want to live my I want to all I want to live all my life just to know you. And every day I want to know you better than I knew you yesterday. Because he's given he's given us all of him. Right? We have all of his fullness. We just have to access it. And we have to say, "Okay, God, I want to know you on a deeper level." Because I, I know you, but I want to know you more. Is that your heart's cry? Is to know him more? Oh no, I just I I know him. We know each other. We're good. No, I want to know you. I want to go deep with you. I want you to speak with me. And not only when you speak with me, I want to listen, and I want to do what you tell me to do without even second thought. You know, because when he tells me to do something, even now, I, I it's like I have to mull it over. Like I know better. Does it make sense with my schedule? Does it make sense with my plan? Does it make sense with my feelings? Okay, then we'll do it. That's not what he wants. He just wants in an abandoned heart to say yes and run after it as hard as you can with the enthusiasm that he gives you. Are you enthusiastic to share Jesus? You know? And it just is sim- the simplest thing is, hey, how are you? Yeah, yeah. Hey, did you know that Jesus loves you? That's so simple he does no he doesn't are you sure how do you know come on man those are all entries into just the plain and simple loving gospel that you get to share with them do you know that jesus loves you yeah i do cool how does he love you can you tell me what's one way that he's loved you this week uh, you woke up right (laughs) come on so it's, it's just cool. I mean, you're not challenging somebody when they say yes, that they know Jesus loves them. But um, when, I, when somebody tells me that they know Jesus loves them, I get excited. And I'm like, cool, tell me more. Tell me more about how you love them. And then I want to tell you how he loves me, you know, and how I, how I know that he loves me. And this is how I love him, you know. Open up those conversations with people because you'll, you can see immediately their heart. On, on this question, do you know that he loves you? And then when they say no, oh, <laughs> let me tell you how he loves you. Let me, what is that? I don't even know. Let me count the ways that he loves you. <laughs> One, he gave his life for you. <laughs> Two, he thinks about you every day. Three, he's pursuing you relentlessly. Did you know that when he looks at you, he is so gosh darn happy that he can't even get over? He's smitten with you. That even when you talk, he loves the way, it is good, he loves the way your voice sounds, right? Has anybody ever heard themselves speak? Ugh. <laughs> it's just not pleasing most of the time. And if you don't know, when we leave, pull out your phone and just say a couple sentences and then you'll see how you sound. He loves the way you sound, even if you don't. <laughs> and I've gotten used to hearing my voice and all the, I don't know, listen, I like giggle a lot when I talk and I'm just like, Ugh. and God's like, Mm-mm. He was like, I love that about you. He was like, because because when I hear you laugh, I get joy out of it. it. Brings me, you know, that you bring joy to him. Just the things you do, the way you talk to people, the way you love people, the way you work, the way you sing. He just he loves it. He's smitten about you guys. He's not mad at you. He's not angry. He wants to see you do better. So when you get some conviction in your life, he's not. That's not like a mad thing from God. He's like, hey. Do better, and I want to help you. He doesn't just say, do better and figure it out. He says, do better. Let's do better together, right? Because you're not in it alone. You're co-heirs. It's an easy job. He's already done it.
So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy. Okay, we went there. 12, for God, for he said to God, I will, pre- I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters, and I will praise you among your ass- assembled people. Kind of sounds like what we're, what we're doing now, right? When we're talking about go tell somebody that Jesus loves them. Just come on, man. We're just Life is just way too short to not stop and talk to that person. And I've, I've done it like less and less in the past uh, like five years because it used to be just bullets shooting out of a gun. I saw somebody and I didn't know you and you made eye contact. Game on, brother, because you looked at me. And it's so, like if we're sitting on an airplane, I used to fly on them a whole bunch. If you're sitting next to me, you're hearing about Jesus. Um, I do it a little bit differently now. Uh, this is the season I'm in. Um, it's funny, though. I went to, went to Denver on Tuesday to fly out a puppy. And let me tell you, that is the best, one of the best jobs that you could, you could have. Sorry, one, one of the more fun jobs, unless you don't like airplanes. I love airplanes. We all know that about me. I love airplanes and gas stations. Um, but I got to, let me tell you, you're, you're a really popular guy in the airport if you're holding a little, a little two, two to one pound Pomeranian in your hand like this and, uh, here, well, where'd you get this dog? And, oh yeah, it's so small. She's so cute. I know. Praise God. Right. I have this, just, this is the best job in the whole world. I get to, God made these little puppies for these, for these humans that just get to love it and take care of it. And I just get to raise and. And I get to to see it and go, and then they say, "Isn't that a hard job, to to say goodbye to a puppy?" No, I've been raising this puppy to love somebody else's family. It's so good. I feel like that's the way I'm raising my kids, honestly, right? Whoever their husband's family is, gonna get really loved. And the gospel. It's going to permeate their family. So good. But yeah, I got like a really good job, and that's like a really good way to to intro the gospel when you have just such a cute little puppy, and I don't have to do anything. They already want to come and talk to me. And yeah, praise God, he just gives me avenues to to make it super easy on me, and it's just just non-threatening. I mean, you came up to me, lady. I just got <laughs> I just got a cute puppy. Six feet. <laughs> oh man, I love airplanes. And then um I saw yeah, it's probably an irrelevant story, but sometimes when you share the gospel it doesn't it doesn't go how you think it's gonna go. Um and then there was this guy and he was and I had like a four hour layover, so I would just went exploring like always. I ran to this guy and he was reading this big book and um God was like do your thing and I'm just like cool and then I took out some money and I had it in my hand and I was just like hey brother how are you and gave him some money and he was like cool and I could tell that it, it just he wasn't firing on all cylinders there when I was trying to have a conversation it was just a lot of like distraction and um you know I just we I'd, I'd let him let him talk and I'd listen and I'd love him and I'd find an opportunity and and finally it got to kind of dragging on I was just like hey brother I'm just gonna stop you there man I just really have it on my heart when I came up to you to ask you um, if if you know who Jesus is. Oh yeah, I know who Jesus is. I used to work with him, but da, 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 and it's just like I know I get that. Like even like it's funny with a Hispanic guy, and it's you say Jesus, and it's, oh Jesus, yeah, it's my cousin. Uh. Um, this is just like no man. I, I'm talking about Jesus Christ, like the one who gave his life for you. Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, and he was just like, yeah, I heard something like that, and I used to go to church, and then I was just like, and when you run into somebody who used to go to church, like I say a lot, is, um, you know, the church has hurt them, and then when I, when I figure out that they go to church and the church hurt them, I apologize on behalf of the church because God didn't hurt you, man did, and that man was in a place of authority, and he used that place of authority to hurt you, and I, I, I'm sorry about that, but that's not the way the bride is. That's not who... He made us to be, and I just want to let you know that that God's not mad at you. And then he was like, "Cool, like it just it it just wasn't there." And then um, when it gets to that point, I like to say, "Okay, man, before I go, I want to pray for you." And um, what's one thing that could happen in your life that would be a complete miracle? 
and he was like he just wasn't getting it you know it was just like what do you like what do you mean it was just more to it but and then i was just like what's one thing that could happen in your life that would be absolutely crazy and he went hey hey, hey uh-uh, uh-uh no i do not like that word <laughs> and i was just like this is such distraction right here is the devil just trying to distract this guy and then I was just like, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, what's something wild that could happen in your life? Well, what do you mean? And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is tough. <laughs> like it doesn't, it, sometimes it goes that way, right? It's just like, where there's just button heads, button heads, button heads. And then I was like, what if, what if, uh, for example, there was somebody that you haven't seen for a very long time and then all of a sudden they're right in front of you. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be wild? <laughs> And uh, he was, and then he was like, "Well, yeah, my uh, my ex girlfriend. Um, sometimes I see her all the time, right next to me, but she's not actually there." And then I was just like, "All right, perfect. Let's pray, brother." And then I just knew that he was getting affected by things he, you know, things he couldn't see and stuff like that. So once I found an avenue to pray, we pray, we love him, we bless him, and then we go because we're not soul winners, we're seed planners okay there's nothing i can do to get this guy to accept jesus and the gospel there's nothing i can do but display it with love and with kindness and i am successful i didn't walk away from that conversation being like oh man what could i have said what couldn't who who cares you said it your, your whole goal was to go up there and love this man and did you do it yes i did okay perfect good well done good and faithful servant you know um, because sometimes when you, when you get some blowback like that, it's just easy. Find, find a way to pray, lay your hands on, and just pray. God, I thank you for him. I love him. I know you love him. I just ask for things that he's seeing that aren't real to not be there. And I just command anything that's mixing up his mind right now to go under the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen, right? That's it. That's an easy job, and we get to do that. And we get to walk away from that knowing that we loved people. And I love God by loving those people. I was skipping away from that. You know what I mean? It's just the best job. And we get to do it. I get an opportunity to do it. And how many times have we passed by opportunities to do it? For what? Are you scared? <laughs> scared of what? He already went before you. Are you nervous? Okay. I was nervous too. And guess what? I get nervous every single time I do it. And then when I start to get nervous... I know that the devil is trying to make me nervous and get me not to do it. So when I do feel that, I go even harder at it because I know he doesn't want me to. And then when I, now, instead of feeling like uh, nervous and attaching it to the devil, I feel nervous and go, ooh, God, are you expecting it too? You know, because he's, he's giddy for you to see that person and be like, I should go talk to him. He's like, he's like clapping his hands and he's getting ready. He's like, you should, you should. You should go tell him about me. You should go love him. You should do anything that you could ever do to, to get him one second closer to me, right? Because we should, we should uh, like, uh, uh, I can't remember who said it a long time ago, but uh, there's this guy that said we should, preach like, uh, we should preach like dying men to dying people. Act like it's the last time you'll ever see that person because we're all dying, right? That person's dying, and we don't want them to die and go to hell. We want to stand at the gates of hell and redirect traffic. This way. This way is the way you should go. This is the way I'm going. We need to go this way. Come with me, brother. God's so good, guys. He all, all right, 13. He also said, I will put my trust in him that is. I and the children God has given me. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood those are facts <laughs> are you guys all human beings here flesh and blood that's what makes you up well guess what the son which they told you is who jesus also became flesh and blood for only as a human being could he die and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had Flesh has the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slave to the fear of dying. You guys don't have to fear dying. Isn't that crazy? 
just two weeks ago I was fearing dying, right? I had some like like problems in my body and I was just looking at my little baby Shiloh and I was like, what if I'm not here in a month and what's going to happen and t- 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 panic attack and anxiety ridden and just this stuff. So it's real guys, right? Like that, that fear that's there. But where are you going? Where is your hope found when you are? Do you trust God to take care of your kids? Do you take trust God to take care of your family when you're not here? It's a real thing to say, but it's a real thing to feel, you know, to get to that point to where you're like, I trust you, Lord. Even if I die, I'm going to be in a much better place. And then even a lot of us Christians, I don't know if we necessarily feel that way. Um, if we're feeling sick and close to dying, there's just this fear that can take over. And, and I want to feel and be secure in my life that even death does not have a grip on me. That even if, if death is creeping on your door, you say, praise the Lord, we will be united. And he will take care of my family. Because he's taking care of them right now. He's just letting me think I got some of the credit. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a faithful lover of God, right? And Jesus became that. He who knew no sin became sin for you. Golly, wrap your heads around it. And when you do, just wrap your head around it again. And when you do, wrap your head around it again. Because you can't lose sight of that, that, that the struggles that you're going through and the temptations that you have been faced with, he, he's been there. He's done that for you. So if you're feeling that struggle, feeling that temptation, just know, Jesus, you've been there and you've done that and you've overcame it. God, I'm asking you to be my rock and help me overcome it too. God, help me get freedom in my life in this place because I know only you can help me because only you have been there and only you have abolished it. We also know that... um, 16. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham, which is us. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like his brothers and sisters, so that he could be a merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Golly, praise God that that's the way it is. I'm just so excited every time I read this because it just accelerates so much joy in my heart that this is what you did, and you did it for me, and you you do it again. That's just such a great love, and then once once we once we can wrap our head around this great love, then we can just be filled with this expectancy about life. And I love um, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest. So the high priest in in that time was like the highest priest and the one that could enter the tabernacle and the one who like spoke to God on like your behalf. Oof. We, I was going to say lucked out, but I don't really believe in luck because luck is for losers. Um, Nowhere in the Bible does it say that this person was lucky, therefore he, you know, got what he got. He was blessed. So when people say good luck, I'm like, nope, luck's for losers. I'll be blessed. Because then if you say lucky, you don't really give. Who are you giving credit to, right? Just throws it out in the world. I'm blessed because him, right? Um, But we are so blessed that he is our high priest, right? And it only says to our merciful and faithful high priest. Praise God that those are the verbiage used right there. One, he's merciful. So when I, when I have done something, he's going to just have mercy on me. But then back up here, does that mean that we should, makes us think that we can escape and ignore? No. It, it just grace is not a free to send card. Okay? Grace is, uh, okay, my son, I love you. I know that you're trying. Pick your head back up. We got places to go and people to see and hell to stop. <laughs> And he's the high priest. He is the one that advocates for us. Like I said, he's up there advocating. He's your your lawyer. 
and I guess the retainer was giving your life to him, <laughs> accepting what he did, right? When you give the lawyer a dollar, he can't go back on you. A free gift, you just got to accept it. All right, wrapping it up. Since he himself has gone through suffering and tested, he is able to help us when we are being tested. That should give us rest right there. That when we're being tested, that's our chance to just lean into God and lean into Jesus because he's been there, he's done that. He left the robe. <laughs> He's so good, guys. Let me, let me run through my notes. Cool. So, in just 18 verses, there's so much jam-packed into there on Hebrews 2, right? I love he starts out with the warning. Um... What was it? He, yeah. Started out with a warning on, on drifting away, guys. And, and when you leave here um, or during ministry time, um, what, what are you anchored to? How long is that rope? How long are you allowed to? Because, like, when you're drifting and that rope is only so long and then you're anchored into him, boom, you feel it, right? Boom. Oh, shoot. I'm not, I'm not where, I, where I'm supposed to be. I'm drifting. Okay? So how long is that rope that you're tethered to God on, right? God shortened that rope up so that way if I'm only even an inch from you, I feel that I feel that blowback, I feel that pushback. But sometimes your rope is really long, right? God sends somebody to, to tug on that rope to, to, to get you to go in the right direction. And if you know anybody in your life whose rope is really, really, really long, give it a pull. Just give it a, it just takes a subtle, how are you today? And then listen to the Holy Spirit. Let him lead your conversation with him. Don't go into that conversation with all of these ideas of the outcome that you want to happen. There's only one outcome I want. I want to love him closer into the kingdom. Or else I just don't want to do it, right? So, so before you go into this conversation, throw away all your preconceived notions because you'll fail. Because that's what we... <laughs> we're just sinners and fail bags, right? Like, it's just... No, like, we're, we're loved, but we need to go into it with a kingdom mindset and, and no agenda that says, I want this, this, and this, and this is how I know I'm successful. No. How are you? You're already successful. What'd you do today? Getting even more successful. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Hey. Oh, yeah, that's so good. I don't, yeah. Just having fake conversations up here, guys. <laughs> um, and then one of the last things I have written in my note that got me really excited. Um, death was scary, but Jesus went first, right? <laughs> Come on. So when I remember I was on a train bridge and we we're about to jump and it was super duper scary, my big brother went first. And I saw him come up, I saw him wave, and he said, it's good, it's deep, let's go. That's what Jesus did for you, right? He said, don't worry about death. I got this. I'll go first. So we don't have to fear it, right? Because, yeah, that's so funny. I'll put that on a t-shirt or something. Death was scary, but don't worry, Jesus went first. <laughs> that's so good. Okay, I'm going to pray. Um, and I just hope that the gospel came out today, okay? Um, and I hope that you realize that he loves you so much. And you're never too far away. You've, you haven't drifted so far away. And then maybe, I was thinking about somebody online too, where you feel like you, you're not drifting, but you hammered that throttle in the opposite direction. And it's not, right? You are never too far away from God's love and his mercy and his grace. But you don't know what I did. I don't need to, but he does. And he's already forgiven you for it. All you need to do is turn your face back in his direction. And, and like I was telling my friend, like, sure, it might seem, a long, seem like a long road, but it's not. <laughs> the devil's telling you it's a long road to get back to him. 
It's like looking up at the sign and it says 239 miles until God. And then you get just, no, you read that wrong. It's like one inch away from God. Because all you need to do is turn around and he's right there. He's not far at all. But if he seems far, that's because that's where the devil wants him to be, as far away from you. And that's what he tells you is God is far away from you and he doesn't listen and he's mad at you. But he's not. He's waiting for you with arms wide open and saying, finally, I've waited so long for you, but it was worth it. So love somebody, guys. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about what he did for them. And also, tell yourself that again, right? Because you guys are worthy. You're worthy every day. If you don't feel it, you died for me. I'm better than this. And even if you are doing good, do we praise him in our good times, right? Or do we just come to him when we have a problem and life is going bad? All right, I'm going to pray. And if anybody wants prayer for anything, um, come up and um, one of us will pray for you or all of us will pray for you. Um, so Jesus, Jesus, we worship you and we love you. We thank you that you died for us. I thank you that you became man and there is no mystery in my life that I'm going to go through that you haven't already encountered. It's so cool. I thank you, God, that you can relate to us and in and, and the mess that we're in. God, and even if we don't view ourselves in a mess, you can just still relate to us in our good times as well. God, I thank you for the good times. God, I thank you for when we go into bad times that we can pick up our head and see you and see through it and know that you've done it and that we can just get on our knees and worship you and praise you, God. We just ask you to help us be effective seed planters, God, to, to not ignore uh, the Holy Spirit's, <laughs> Holy Spirit's pushing and leading, God. I like it because he should be leading you, but sometimes he's pushing you because you won't listen. So God, we just ask to be led by you in everything that we do, God. We just want to know you more. We just want to know more about who you are, God. And I just ask you to speak to our hearts intimately this week, God, that we have such an urge to be running to you to spend time with you, to be in your presence. Yeah. <laughs> to know, as I was feeling like, to know what you're like, to know what you sound like, to know what you smell like. God, we're just asking you to be more real to us than you've ever been, God. And I just declare that we're ready. We're ready for it. We're, we're, we're ready to be with you. We're ready to be in your presence. God, I just ask that you give us a strong urge, like a, a, an unction to, to just, just know you and to talk to you, God. That um, I just kept hearing a lot of times this week, they were too, in this time, oh man, yeah. The God was saying, in this time, my people are too distracted to spend time with me. My people are too distracted to look at my face. We have so many things in this world to distract us. We have relationships, jobs, phones, media, TVs. We have everything to distract us from your face, God. There's 24 hours in a day, and how much time of it do we give to you, God? God, I ask you to convict our hearts where we're putting our time, Father. God, let us make the time that you deserve God, we love you. We ask you to burn our hearts on fire with passion to seek your face and to read your word and to communicate with you. God, in our prayer time, it's not just a mundane thing, but it's I get to plug into the source and talk to the lover of my soul. Jesus, we worship you. We love you. And there's nobody like you, God. I just ask you to be that in our lives. I ask that you help us see 
how much you love us and how much you care about us, that, that you would tell us not to do these things to save us, God. Not because there's a bunch of rules to follow and stuff to do, but because you care about us and you care about our life and you care about the direction that we're going enough to say, stop, look at me. So God, I ask for that stop, look at me to yell brighter than anything else in our life this week. And we wake up, you draw us, you say, come to me. Good morning, how are you? Come to me. We get to be together again. It's like he's waiting for you to wake up. And when you open your eyes, he wants to be the first thing on your lips. Praise you, Jesus. Love you. We magnify your name above anything else that we can do today, God. We ask you to be the forefront of our thoughts, God. That everything we do be for you, God. That when we work, we work unto the Lord. We just thank you, Jesus, for, for being that in our life. That we get this opportunity to not struggle. Jesus, you're so worthy of all our praise. You're so worthy. You're so holy. You're so merciful and you're so just. Jesus, we love you, and we trust you. We trust you with our families. We trust you with our finances. We trust you, God, and we love you. Amen.